Hello and welcome, you're here with me Charlie Tumblr and in this short video we're going to be starting up the lovely SU30 which is a free mod which has been updated recently. They've done a lot of, the developers have done a lot of work with the flight model. Um, there are some problems on the inside we'll see potentially later but we have um, four lovely aircraft. Um, it actually comes as a pack of eight aircraft because of the way that um, they're based on the Flaming Cliffs mod. If you want to do an air-to-air -air version, then you have to pick an air-to-air -air, uh, specific frame, and then if you do air-to-ground, um, it's the same sort of thing. But it's based on the SU-25 um, kind of logistics, and then the air-to-air -air is the MiG-29, SU-27 type logistics. The four basic versions, though, um, we have the 30 MKM, so the, the last letter is basically the country that uses it. So M is Malaysia, which is this one here. Um, and then coming along, we've got the uh, I, which is the Indian version. And at the end here, we have the uh, A, which is the Algerian version. And I've just put some different weapons on all of those just to show you the different kind of things that you can have. Um, the Indian version particularly seems to be quite advanced. It has um, harm type missiles and these, those little orange things, mini cluster bombs, which are ace, oh, sorry, mini cruise missiles that um, are really great knocking out tanks. And you can carry 16 of those, which is nice. And then the uh, Malaysian one is kind of standard. I set this out as an air-to-air -air type platform just to show you how many weapons this thing can carry. But us, we are in this one here, the SM, which is kind of the standard variant. Um, the ladders that you can see outside, you can turn those on and off in the uh, settings if you don't actually want to see those. But we'll hop inside and each of the different variants has a slightly different cockpit, but the layouts are generally the same. So learning how to start up this aircraft will be uh, useful for all of the others. The only thing that's slightly different is um, the way that some of the switches move when you flick them and the way that this panel looks is, is a little bit different. Um, but the main thing is to start this aircraft, battery on. Uh, and then we're going to turn our radios on, like so. And then we're going to flick at the back here. These switches. Now on this model, these move in pairs. Other models, they you might find they move individually. And at this point, we check that our radio is on. And if you wanted to, you would talk to the ground crew. Just get that key and show you that one. This one here, communication menu. Uh, we can use that to bring up the uh, comms menu and talk to the ground crew and to do any refueling and rearming because the aircraft is based on the flaming cliffs model if your engine is running you will find it very difficult to get the ground crew to acknowledge any um, refueling and rearming requests but if you're happy with the way that your aircraft is at this point you can go on with the start uh, what we do have is this fancy little start handle which if i could get my cursor over the end of it i'm going to press and hold it two three four five and let go and then we look in here, and we can hear the engines are starting up, and these needles are going to start moving. So there's actually two needles there showing our left and right engine. And the next key binds we're going to need is the left throttle idle. Um, there is a timing error there; they'll need to sort that. And also the right throttle idle detent, and that just takes that moves the throttle off idle. Um, sorry, off off to uh, idle. And we'll see that in a second. So when it gets to about 20. I'm going to do the left engine first, doesn't really matter which way around to do it, but there's the left engine, and we'll see the left hand needle start moving, and I think in a future update they're going to upgrade all of the um, the cockpit and needles and things to make it a little bit better, and then we're going to do the right one, and that's going to do its thing. Now while it's doing its thing we may as well start at this side of the, uh, the cockpit, and we're just going to flick all the yellow switches up, and then we're going to flick all the blue switches up that we can. So trying to keep my head still here, sorry. And these ones as well. Don't need to worry about any of these. Um, we may as well do a chaff and flare while we're here. So you can't quite see there, but it's chaff 48, flare 48, program one. Voice notification unit Got operational. Semi. Cool, and that's the new voiceovers that they've recorded for the aircraft, which is quite nice. Um, if you want to change the chaff and flare program, you'll have to experiment to see what it does, but they basically just rip through all your chaff and flare in seconds, the different modes. Um, so I'm on program one, just about to see that with 48 turf and flares. Coming on to the left hand side, we've got all these blue switches still to flick. It doesn't really matter which order you do them in, but that's all of those. And then if we go down, there's a switch at the back here that says noseboard steering. You can flick that. Again, you can bind pretty much all of these to other stuff. Right, the last few bits we need to do is we need to align the INS. Uh, typing error, they'll need to have a look at that one as well. 
and there are two different modes. At the moment, it makes no difference other than how long it takes to align the actual alignment um, quality, I guess. It's exactly the same. So you may as well go for ACL, which is accelerated. So push that, change this to 1 minute 59, and then it'll start counting down. Now, while you're waiting for that to happen, you can start fiddling with all the buttons on here. What I would say, though, is try not to play with the MFDs while the alignment is in progress, because for some reason, some of the button combinations will reset your alignment. So what we're going to do is we're just going to turn on the HUD, and we're going to turn on this little panel here, and we'll just wait for it to do its thing, and I will see you in about 1 minute 45 seconds. And we're back. We've got about 7 seconds to go. Um, you may notice, depending on the variant that you start up, you have this hydraulics failure message comes up. That is like um, just like a light check, essentially, for the the actual hydraulics failure, you don't have a hydraulics failure. All you need to do is, this is the master caution button, just press that, and that resets it and gets rid of that master caution. So it tells me the alignment is ready, so all I need to do is put that into the computer, and all you have to do is, this top left button where it says ANL1, just push it twice, like so, and then this screen changes to let you know that the alignment is ready to go. What we see now is this middle panel didn't have anything, or had very little on it, it's now populated it with our position, Let's put all of these circles on these are airfields around us and that's the runway heading which is very useful if you get lost and if i had a flight plan it would have it like as a white lines with the uh, routes and big circle markers that tell you the waypoints and things um, we can zoom that in and out like so so that's that's a 200 mile range so that's 100 to sorry kilometers 100 to that one 200 to the edge and you can zoom back all the way in if you need to for like finals and things but that's it that's pretty much the start um, there are some engine features we'll talk about, but we'll talk about that in another video. Uh, we may as well just taxi out. Now if you notice, we've got these huge ladders sticking outside. That is a very good reminder that we need to close the canopy. So we just left click on that, and that will bring the canopy down. And if you want your mirrors, um, these don't do anything, but to get it to work, you have to hop over this mirror and left click. That brings that up, and then we can taxi out. There's no parking brake. Um, I'm just putting a little bit of thrust in. Um, and we can see these little chevrons here in the middle. Yeah, we have a nice taxi. Just go for this. Actually, I will show you, I'll just park here a second. I won't talk to the tower, but I'll show you how you would change the frequency just in case you wanted it. So we just park up here. Um, so down here is the radio panel, and it's showing you channel one. Um, you've got two different radios, radio one and radio two, and the little star shows you that one. And then if you left and right click on here, it goes through the different pre-brief channels. Uh, those are set by the mission designer, or you can overlay something. So I think now this is 327. So if you wanted to overlay, you hit enter, 327, enter, and then that's the new channel. Um, and we may as well get it on. So let's go for it. Uh, nose wheel steering is on. So easy enough to taxi. line this up. Um, this thing has a lot of swing when you um, when you're taxiing out. So if you trying to if you trying to if you hit the thrust now and um, we're trying to get airborne, you would sway all over the place, and it's quite difficult to get back under control. So it, this is one of those few aircraft where it's nice to just get yourself lined up, get into a stop, and then power up. And then off we go. Now that click is quite nice, it tells you the afterburner is on. And then that's shown by these double chevrons. That tells me that my afterburner is on. And when you when we get airborne in a few seconds, I'll uh, take the afterburner off. And uh, you'll hear it click back down again. Speed is there, 270 to 80, that's in kilometers an hour. Ideally, you want to be in the air by about 350. And gear up. Um, there is a handle down here, which you can do for your gear if you like clicking things, rather than key presses. And that's us in the air. And what I'll do is I'll just uh, take the afterburners off and show you the, the indicator. So you see the double chevrons on either side. If I bring the afterburner back, they come off and you hit that loud click to tell you that it's off. Um, these are accelerometer type things. So if they're near the middle, you're not accelerating. If they're near the top, you are accelerating. And if they're near the bottom, um, you're decelerating. Don't confuse these with like a ladder bar or anything. That's nothing to do with that. Um, and that nose wheel steering we should turn off because we're in the air. 
Um, very quickly before we uh, end this video, the only other bit of symbology that's maybe a little unusual is this one down here. This is to do with the vector thrust that's on the back of this aircraft. This is what the uh, developers have spent a lot of time doing. These nozzles will move around all over the place. Um, what you have got here is a switch here, which is your mover control. If you flick that switch, then you're kind of ready. So the bottom switch is kind of hands held version. You're flying around nicely. If you uh, with auto trim on. If you flick it up, it's a bit more like a conventional aircraft where you have to maybe do a little bit more work yourself. And then you have on here this little button which is called maneuver control and it has a key press, toggle thrust vectoring on and off. If you flick that switch, it moves up and you see this goes into a circle and now hopefully we'll see it on the outside. You can see my nozzles doing all sorts of stuff pointing in and out and kind of helping me move which is very nice um, but not practical for normal flight if you're in a dogfight you want to turn that on and when you finish the dogfight um, you turn that back off again and you just have to push that button again like so and then take it out of maneuver mode and you can get yourself right steady and level the only other thing I might do on startup if I was um, prepping for it is there is a little one bit of extra information we can put on here. If you hit the nav button and then hit data, um, we have some extra information. The only thing I would change is this one, the hazard barometer. So what will happen is I'll um, I'll set it and show you actually is oh, nav data hazard barometer. Let's set it to 500 meters. So now, if I point the aircraft at the ground, if you're ground attacking, you're not going to want this at 500 meters because you're going to get very frustrated. Uh, hang on, let me just uh, point at the ground. Trying to go supersonic. Altimeters in the top right here, uh, 1,800 meters and descending. So I'm going to point at the ground. And any second now. Low. Collision avoidance has kicked in, and it says there, recover, and it's brought the aircraft back up and saved me from crashing, which is another lovely touch. So that's the startup sequence for the SU-30. I've covered a little bit of extra stuff just to make the future videos a little bit shorter, but if you have any questions or comments, please write down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Until then, happy hunting and stay safe.